Hello, my name is Simar Mohanty and I am an SDG warrior from Bangalore, India. Under the guidance of my teacher Kamal Ma'am, I have decided to complete the September monthly build challenge which was based on being creative. So let's explore my pollinator garden. To understand pollinators, we first have to understand what exactly is pollination. So let's go ahead and explore the world of bees. So what is pollination? Organic farmer, can you tell us something more about pollination? Pollination is the transfer of pollen from a stamen to a pistil. It is necessary for producing seeds. What are these? For that, we will have to understand the parts of a flower. So grab your bee wings and let's explore the parts of a flower. So the first part of the flower is the peduncle, which is the stalk of a flower. The second part of the flower is known as the receptacle, the part of a flower stalk where the parts of the flower are attached. The next part of the flower is known as the sepal. The sepal are the outer parts of the flower which are often green and leaf-like that enclose a developing bud. The petals are the parts of a flower that are often conspicuously colored to attract pollinators. The stamen is the male reproductive part of the flower that has two parts, a long slender stem called the filament with a knob-like end called the anther that produce a sticky powder known as pollen. Now, the pistil is the female reproductive part of the flower that has three parts. The top knob-like part is called as the stigma. A long slender style and an enlarged base, basal portion is known as the ovary where the ovules are produced as you can see over here. Mature ovary is actually a fruit and the mature ovule is a seed. So these were the parts of the flower. Now let's go ahead and see how are the bees acting as the pollinators? How are they contributing as an agent of a pollinator? What about butterflies? I've seen them moving around flowers. So do they also carry out pollination? Yes, so do other birds and other animals like bats. So now let's learn about birds from this ornithologist. Birds. Some birds, especially hummingbirds, pollinate plants. The plants which generally attract these birds are brightly colored with red, orange or yellow flowers but they are often odorless since birds have a poor sense of smell. Now let us learn about bats from the chiroptologist. Many animals that pollinate plants such as bats are nocturnal meaning they are generally active at night and so the flowers that need to attract them often have a strong smell but may not be too colourful. What about aquatic plants? I have never seen bees swimming inside water. How are they pollinated? They are pollinated by water. Hence, water is an agent of pollination. In addition, wind also acts as an agent of pollination. Now let us learn about wind as a pollinator. Usually, they have less colourful, unscented flowers and they do not produce nectar. 
The stamens and pistils of these plants are often long. Their pollen is usually lighter in weight than other plant pollen and the wind carries the pollen from one plant to another. Now, do all flowers have male and female reproductive parts? Not quite. We have unisexual flowers with only one reproductive part and bisexual flowers with both male and female reproductive parts present. Based on this, we have two types of pollination. So, the first type of pollination is self-pollination. When pollen from a plant's stamen is transferred to that same plant's stigma, it is known as self-pollination. As you can see an example over here. The second type of pollination is known as cross-pollination. When the pollen from a plant's stamen is transferred to a different plant's stigma, it is called cross-pollination. Cross-pollination produces stronger plants. The plants must be of the same species although. I get it that plants need pollination for producing seeds and reproduction. But what do bees get out of pollination? Why would they visit flowers? The simple answer to that is that they get nectar, a source of food. Now let's learn more about nectar and honey. Nectar is a sweet liquid produced by plants to attract pollinators. It acts as a source of food for them as it is rich in sucrose with small amounts of fructose and glucose. Now bees gather this nectar and use it to prepare honey which is a viscous, sticky su substance made by bees by processing nectar in their stomachs. Bees store honey as a food reserve for the colony in winter, adding an enzyme to ripen it. Honey consists of water, sugar, minerals and enzymes. It is an antiseptic and easily digestible. Ah, that explains why honey is used in medicines because of its antiseptic properties. Store honey. But where do bees exactly do that? Let's learn more about that. Bees live in nests called beehives, which have got small hexagonal compartments called as combs. The shape and size of a comb depends on the type of bees. But we can also rear bees for honey and the place where we rear honeybees is known as an apiary and the rearing of bees on a large scale is called apiculture. So now we come back to our first question. What is a pollinator garden? A pollinator garden is planted and designed with specific nectar and pollen producing plants in a way that attracts pollinating insects like bees. Bee pollination is needed for the production of about one third of our food crops. When it comes to fruit, the number of bees visiting a plant affects the size, uniformity and amount of fruit that it produces. Bee pollination also has an impact on other foods that we eat, such as meat. Since the animals we consume often eat plants which are pollinated by bees. So now, Let's take a look at some of my pollinator gardens. Here's my first one. Isn't it beautiful? Here's my other pollination garden where wind, water, bees and other animals like birds and bats act as the agents of pollination. And here's how the two different types of pollination, self and cross pollination look like in a greenhouse. At last, 
Here's a reminder why bees are so very special. They are our very own pollinators, our main pollinators for about one third of our food crops. What would we do without bees?